Hello, how are you and welcome to another video um, in which I'll be showing you about Git and GitHub. So in this video, we'll be looking at how to make sure that you have Git set up. We're going to use Git for keeping track of our software changes and just to make sure that everything that we save, we have a full history of what we have developed. And it's very handy to use Git and, and GitHub. So I'm going to tell you all about it in this video and I hope you're going to learn how to set this up and you're going to understand what's going on. Now, in the previous video, we looked at PyCharm. We are focusing on PyCharm because I think PyCharm is, I think, the best tool out there for working with Python because it's dedicated to Python and therefore it's tailored to Python in ways that other tools, I, in my opinion, uh, are not. So the structure of this video is I'm going to go through um, the whole process of how you're going to get Git. If you don't have Git, um, how to install it, where you're going to get it from. I've prepared documentation on this. And if you're signed up for the class and you should have received an um, invitation from that for Google Classroom, um, just click join class and you're going to see all the material for the class. So there's a full 30 page document, which has got a lot of screenshots. It's 30 pages because of the screenshots, not because of the text, where it takes you step by step through everything I'm going to tell you today. But in this video, it's going to be much easier for you to appreciate the content of, of setting up Git and GitHub using a video. You could watch it and pause um, and enjoy. So let's get right into it, Git and GitHub and getting started. So as I said, these, material are, these materials are being prepared primarily for those who are taking the Python Level 1 course. Uh, the Python Level 1 course is a hands-on instructor-led in-depth class that gives you um, strong foundation on using Python. Why do you need to use Python? Well, programming is the future. Um, anything that, um, in the jobs that are to come, you need to know how to code. Um, and I just want to give you a very nice, solid foundation. Okay, so let's get going. So what's this presentation going to be about? Oops, let's just go back one step. I want to give you an introduction on what these tools are and how to, uh, I'll tell you how they are set up and what they do, what, what they're all about. <clears throat> and then we're going to go into obtaining and installing them. I'll show you the sources where to get them from. Um, and I'll show you the, inst the instructions that you should follow. We'll not actually do an installation because in my case, I already have Git installed and I have an account on GitHub. Um, but I'll show you, I'll take you right to the door. Um, and if you have any problem, and you can always get back to me and then we can see what we can do. We also talk about um, connecting GitHub to GitHub from PyCharm. And the reason we want to do this is we want to do all our work from within PyCharm so that we don't have to keep stepping out and using different tools. Um, and PyCharm supports this natively. And therefore, I think it's, it's really important to get this right, right from the beginning. <clears throat> then in the end, we're going to create a repository. Um, where we'll use the example that we had from the previous video where we just set up an initial project. Um, and then we're going to connect that to GitHub, we'll create a repository, we'll create a local repository, then we'll, we'll create a remote repository, we'll make some changes in the repo remote repository, and then we're going to sync back. Okay, so let's start right at the beginning. What is Git? Well, Git is a free and open source, source control management system that allows you to manage your source code. So that's the whole point. It's managing your source code. Now, I've underlined a couple of words here. One is that is it's free. You don't have to pay for a license. It's available to anyone who has got internet connection. And in a lot of cases, like with, with Mac, you'll get Git already installed. Um, it's open source, which means that if you want to see how it is, the instructions that define how Git works are written, you can go to the repository and you can read that. It, and distributed is a really important keyword here. Uh, the idea is that you will always have the full repository with you. 
anyone who checks out a copy of the repository will have the full repository with them. They'll have the full history. And anytime you have to interact with someone else, what you do is a sync. You'll do a sync where you will exchange whatever updates you've added. And it's clever enough to know, to distinguish between what you have made, what contributions you have made and what the other person has contributed. And obviously it does this at scale where you have, you know, up to thousands, millions of people who would use Git to manage projects. Now, if you want to find out more about Git, that's the URL. It's git-scm.com. Um, Git allows you to, as I said, keep a complete history of how your code is changing over time. Now, the natural way to do this is just to save multiple copies of files. But what ends up happening is you're going to have files with different names to kind of keep track of all the different changes that you've made. But that's really not a history. That's just different files. And that's not very forgiving because it doesn't allow you to retain some of the bad features that you might have wanted to retain within the same file. So with Git, you can re retain a clean file, which is always, um, you can ignore all the previous failures that you've had in your code. Um, and you can have those in the repository. So you can just commit those and have them in the repository and then you can clean things up so that your code looks nice and clean. And that's one of the great advantages that gives you. It makes sure that you're always in a clean state. Um, it allows you to collaborate with other developers. With, there are many, many tools available um, that it, it enables this um, particular functionality. So um, the fact that you're able to push um, what changes you have and you can push it directly to someone else's computer. Um, and you can then work together, you know, on making sure that, uh, that your code has all the changes that other people have added. Um, it allows multiple versions of your code, and it does this mainly through very cheap branching. We are not going to cover branching in this course because we don't need to. Each of you will be working on your own code. And therefore, the only person who's going to look at your code if you're on the tutor track is myself, and there will no, be no need for branching. I'll just check out your copy of your code and, and make comments, and then I'm going to push it back to your repository. And there won't be multiple versions we won't be doing. But you could learn this if you want to. There is sufficient documentation online for that. So everyone who codes uses Git. I mean, that's a bit of an exaggeration. But the point here is that if you are seriously into writing code, then you need to learn how to use Git um, because you can't run away from it and it's going to amplify your powers. Now, let's move on to the next question. What is GitHub? So if Git is the tool that actually does the source control management, then GitHub is a website that allows you, first of all, it'll host your Git repository. So when you use Git, what you create is a repository, and that repository stores commits of your code and branches of versions of your code. Now, GitHub is a website that then allows you to have all your repositories with all their versions and all the history um, publicly accessible or, you know, remotely accessible because it could be private, privately um, hidden. Um, so that you could do collaboration. But it's not just a website that stores your repository. It has a lot of other functionalities that are built around it. So it facilitates collaboration because it keeps track of the different issues that you might have. So there's a tab, and we'll see this. We might see this in passing. You can keep track of issues. Um, you can um, keep track of contributions. Um, it, it allows, it has a nice way that you can seamlessly integrate uh, contributions from people who have access to your code. Um, it also provides a lot of automation. So now there are things called Git, GitHub Actions that enable continuous integration workflows. Um, and the idea behind continuous integration is that you can have a commit trigger um, publishing your code on um, on, a, on a website, for example, like PyPy, the Python Packaging Index, you can have your code automatically, you know, 
if it's a new version, then it will automatically push that new version. It also allows you to organize not just your code, but also your team. So it has tools for um, allowing organizations to be set up and provide access or restrict access to different uh, repositories or within the team or allow you to configure a hierarchy within the team. And there are many, many more features. I can't talk about all of them here. I'm sure there are many things I don't even know about. There are alternatives to using um, GitHub. So you could use uh, Bitbucket, GitLab. Uh, there are many, many others. Um, you could even set up your own Git server, which is quite easy to do. Uh, and you could then use it to collaborate. For example, if you're in a local area network and you don't have access to the internet, but you still want to work with um, uh, in a team, you could just set up one of your computers to be a, a Git server and you could push to that machine. So with those two out of the way, now let's get into the nuts and bolts of actually getting started. So we're going to start by talking about uh, obtaining and installing Git. Now, if you want to use Git, then you have to go to their website. Um, just get that. So to get Git, you go to their website. So um, I've set this up here. You'll find this in the documentation. Um, git sem.com's book, getting, start, getting Started Installing Git. And that describes how you install Git. So if you're on Linux, they give you the full instructions how to do that. If you're on Mac, it'll tell you also how to install that. And this will be for the latest version of Git. Um, and if you're on Windows, they'll also give you instruction how to do that. Now, if you are feeling particularly ambitious, and I wouldn't recommend this if you are trying this for the first time, you could install it from source. The reason I say that I wouldn't recommend it if you're doing this for the first time is that it will likely fail in a way that you're, you're not um, expecting, and, and then it'll end up uh, just taking a lot of your time so that you don't end up um, getting to the goal, which is to have Git installed. Okay, in my case, I already have Git installed, but um, this page provides everything you need to know in order to, to in, down, download and install it. So I'd imagine for most of the people in the class, you're going to have Windows computers. Um, so what it says here is the most official build is available to download from the Git website. You just go to that. Um, so let's click that. So your download is starting and it's going to tell me what is your executable and you just install it and it'll be nice and straightforward. Um, of course, you're going to say save. Now I'm running a Mac, so I can't, this is going to be pointless for me to do. But there you have it. That's where you, how you get it and how you install it. Um, so let's move on to the next. So now once you have install it the next thing you need to do i would re recommend you do at this point is create a github account now for you to get, get a github account you have to go to the github website so the github website is github.com it's going to take you to this lovely website where you have um if you do not have a, an account you click on sign up where you'll be asked to enter three pieces of information your the username you want to be identified by your email address and a password and then they're going to challenge you just to make sure that you're a human being um, and then you're good to go they'll probably send you an email i did this many years ago so i can't remember exactly what the process is but <clears throat> it's your standard sign up so there shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary there so this is probably one of the easier bits so i'm going to sign into my account um, and when you sign in so this is what you see. So this is one of my um, repositories. I have a number of useless projects that I haven't, I don't really work on. But that's what you're going to see when you log in. And you could create a new repository. You could search for repositories. You could, these are all the repositories that I have. Uh, some of them are, are my own. Some of them I, I forked from, from other people's repositories. And then you choose your teams. Uh, there'll usually be some 
news or some feed here so you can imagine like with facebook there's a feed of all the activity that that, that you know you you should be aware of for example if you're signed if you're sub um, if you are a member of an organization or a different team all the commits all the history everything that's happened is going to show up on this on this page now the most important bits are here on the top right so i'm just going to turn off my video so that you can see that so here on the top right <clears throat> um, where you have this drop down and it will tell you about who you are signed in as, you could set your status, then you have access to all these options here. Now we're going to get into one of these sections later on when we are con connecting PyCharm with Git. But these are important for you to know. Um, there's also this shortcut here on the right, another drop down, and this is where you, you could create a new repository. You could import a repository, you could create a gist, um, where a gist is just a snippet of code. Uh, you could create an organization or you could create a new project. Okay, so that's what you need for setting up your GitHub account. So once you've done this, you have a GitHub account, you're now ready to get into the real nuts and bolts. So now we're going to start connecting GitHub from PyCharm. Now, what we're going to do here, so I have PyCharm here. So if you did watch the other video, you'll remember we created this project. And this project has just the default. So we have a virtual environment, which is tied to Python 3.9. And that virtual environment sits in a particular folder, as you can see there. And there is one module. And these are called modules. People call them scripts, but the official name is module. <clears throat> which has one function called print i. And at the moment, this project is not tied to a repository. And that's what we are going to try to do. Now, before we we do that we need to connect um, we need to connect to to PyCharm and what we're going to do is we are going to first um, add our credentials now for us to add our credentials github changed recently so now they they don't allow you to use the username and password you used to log in on the command line what they recommend is something called token-based token -based authentication. So with token-based authentication, you create a one-time token, and that one-time token will then be assigned to an application. So it will be the password for that application. And what that will allow is only that application will have that password since you don't have it. So it's, you'll only see it once. You have to copy and paste it immediately. And hopefully nobody else will be able to use that. So, and it's quite a long token, so that means it gives you some really good security. Now, in my case, what I'm going to do is, because I had already done this, I have to first of all delete what I had before. So I click the preferences on the top right. That opens all my preferences. And I come to version control. Now, within version control, there are many ways you could do version control. And in, since we are interested in GitHub, if we select GitHub now, you see it already has my account. I'm going to delete that for the sake of you to, to, to uh, learn how to do this. But we will need to add a token. Now, the beautiful thing about PyCharm is it allows you to initiate the process from within PyCharm. So you could, you could actually go to the GitHub website and do part of the process from GitHub. But I love the way these guys have they've integrated it right into PyCharm. So from GitHub, we are going to select, we're going to choose drop down here, the two options, login via GitHub. So that's eventually going to be deprecated. So you'll not be allowed to do that in the future. And if you do that right now, you'll get an email with a warning, with a deprecation notice telling you this is going to be phased out. And therefore, you should use a token. So we're going to click token, and that's going to open up this little dialog box. This dialog box is to add a GitHub account. Now, the server is github.com. As I said, you could set up your own GitHub. In our case, we are using it, the one at, at GitHub. And we have to enter a token. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to click this button, Generate. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to take us to our browser and it's going to show us this page, new personal access token. Now, there are certain recommendations that PyCharm has in order for you to take the full advantage of the GitHub integration um, from within PyCharm. So what it has already pre-checked here is what it is going to support. It's going to allow you to do workflows. It's going to allow you to read um, uh, the organization and team membership details. And it's going to allow you to write to gists. And then it's going to give you full access to a repository. Okay. So what we're going to click is the generate token button at the bottom. And when we click that, it's going to say, okay, then in my case, it says uh, that has already been taken. So what I should actually do here is I should first delete this in order to illustrate. So I'm just going to delete this token. Um, and then I'm going to go back and click that again. Okay. But you click it once, it should bring you here. If you have that, you could rename it if you want to, but it already has a handy name that this is a PyCharm GitHub integration plugin and we click generate token. Now you're going to see my token. Okay. So it's going to be, I'm going to delete this obviously, because if you can see this token, then you're going to um, obviously do harm to my repository. So I'm going to copy that by clicking this button here and I'm going to come back to this dialog box and I'm going to paste the token and I'll click add account. And voila, you are connected. Now, what this means is that I can perform actions on GitHub from PyCharm. And just with that, so I have to click apply and I click OK. And there we go. I am connected now. Now, my IDE can communicate with, with GitHub. And we, we can now do a lot of useful things. Okay. There we go. So, so we have now connected to GitHub from PyCharm. It's quite a straightforward process, but if you read the instruction from the documentation, it seems very long, long. Uh, it's quite straightforward. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a repository. Now, in order for us to create a repository, we're going to go back to PyCharm. Um, let me open PyCharm. Okay, so here we are back in PyCharm. Now, I'd like you to notice the color of the, the text. So the text you see here that's in white because I'm using a dark theme. What I'm going to do is to create a repository, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to, oh no, actually, but the correct thing is to come here to VCS at the top. And then I'm going to say, uh, create a Git repository. So once I select that, it's going to convert that folder into a Git repository. Now, it will open this dialog box. It's usually your, 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 win, your window browser. And at, at the moment, it's selected on the, the directory in which my file is. And I'm going to click Open. And that converts this. So now, this is no longer just a folder. This is now a Git repository. Now, notice the text here has changed color. It's red. And what that means is that that file has not been added to the repository. Okay. And my repository is empty because that's a default state. And what I need to do is I need to add content to the repository. So I'm going to right click on this. And now, first of all, notice up here that it's changed from VCS because initially when it was VCS, it was open to any type of repository, Mercurial or Subversion or Perforce, whatever you had, you are going to use. But now since we have committed to using Git, it's changed to Git. So now all the options that will be available here will be for Git. And now when I right click, the context menu I see will now have this option for Git. And I'm going to say add. Now I click this on the folder. So that means the whole folder will be added. I'm going to say add. And now that changes to green. Anytime you see green in PyCharm, that means that's a new file that's been added, but not committed. Okay. So there are stages that your files go through. Um, there is red, which means that it was not yet in the repository. Then there is green, which means it's added to the repository, but it's not committed. And then when they go back to white, it means that you have now um, added it to the repository. If it's grayed out, it means it's ignored. And if it's blue, it means it had been in the repository 
um, but it has changes that need to be added and committed. So now that we have added but not committed, so what we're going to do is we're now going to commit. Now, to commit, we're going to use, so we have these, now this set of buttons has appeared at the top right. Oh, sorry, I need to hide myself. So in, in PyCharm, you'll notice there are these, there are these little buttons that have appeared at the, at the top right. These are now what we're going to use to manage our repository. The first one here is for updating, which means give me changes from the server, from, from GitHub, or from wherever I'm collaborating. Commit now means bake this into the repository. And push is now send this to the repository. So I could either get new changes, I could add new changes to my local repository, or I could push changes from my local repository. Now, what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with committing. And when we click commit, we're going to see um, this pops up. It's going to show you what's called the default change list, which is the set of files that um, are, are going to be added. The, the current set of files that are going to be part of the commit. So every commit will include changes from several files. And you're going to see this as we, as we keep on um, developing, as writing code. So we have um, what you see here in grayed out, it's dot idea. And that is a hidden folder, starting with a dot means hidden in, on, on Mac and Linux. That folder contains the settings for this project. And it's important to keep them as part of your repository so that in the event that you pull from a different computer, you'll be able to get all the changes um, all the ch your new project will mirror what you had in this project on this machine. And then we have the main.py file, which is this one in the text window. And we have a few other files. And it's fine to keep them in the repository. And you, if you don't, PyCharm tends to pop up some little um, notice on the bottom right um, telling you you can keep these files in the repository. But it's fine to put them. And I, I think it's, it's I, I always do this. I think it's a good practice. So what we're going to do is then we have to type a commit message. Every commit has to have a short description about it. And usually for the initial commit, you're going to have, you'll just call it initial commit. <clears throat> now, and then we click commit. And you're going to see a few uh, progress bars at the bottom. And okay, it looks like it will say, okay, there are six files have been committed. Initial commit. And you could click now on the project window again to hide that uh, commit dialog. The commit dialog is this little button on the left. We click the project dialog, not notice the colors are back to what they were before. So now we have created this repository. We have added content to it. We have committed that content and we can actually view what the repository looks like. So if you click this button on the bottom left, git here, then you're going to see the state of your repository. So at the moment, we are looking at local. Um, head is a pointer that indicates a current branch. And that's what it basically says, the head current branch. We're currently on local. We have um, the branch is called master. This is, would typically be the default. In If you create a repository from GitHub, it's called main. But that doesn't really matter. I mean, so in our case, the default here is master. We're using a relatively old version of, I think this is because it's an older version of, of GitHub, of Git, sorry. And that's the log uh, tab. If you click on the console tab, it will show you all the commands that were actually run internally. You don't need to do that. Just focus on the lo log tab. Now, there's a little section here which shows you more details, it shows you this is the actual commit. That's the branch that we are currently on. Who committed? When did they commit it? What did they commit? So here on the right, in this tiny section here, you'll see everything that was added to this commit. And you can actually double click on each of these files to see what was added. In this case, these, fi these files were completely new. They were not on the repository before. So if we double click them, it will just show us that everything was brand new. But if you are dealing with files, if you're dealing with content that 
was um, previously in the repository, it will show you the difference between what you had previously and what you have right now. And you can, it's a very handy way to, to if you want to modify the file again. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to close that. And right at the bottom here, there's a little section here. It will show you the, the name of the, the description of that commit, the commit message. Usually it divides them. There's a header and then there's going to, you can add a description. Most people just usually put a description. So that's what's going to appear as the initial commit. That's the a partial hash. I won't go into detail, but you can read up on that. Um, that's who I am, the committer. That's my email because that's tied to my my repository. And again, we are pointing that's the head and that's a master branch. Okay, so it says there are two branches. We don't need to go into those details right now, but that's what you'll see when you look at the branch. This is the Git tab. Now, as I said, all this is on local. We now need to get this into GitHub. How do we do that? Okay. So to get this into GitHub, we're going to click the Git again at the top and we have this GitHub option here. And we can then say now share project on GitHub. So if you click that, it's going to open this little dialog box and it's going to, you can change the name if you want. You have an option to make this private. I like to make things private from the beginning because you don't want people to see, I don't know, it's up to you, but it's, I like to keep things private, at least in the beginning. So you could keep that private. And even if they're private, you could still collaborate with people. So you can add people to the repository, um, add collaborators, and then you'll be able to, they'll be able to make changes and push changes to, to you. You could write a short description. Um, and once you're ready, you just click share. And you'll see at the bottom here, there's a progress bar. It's pushing to GitHub and it's going to tell us successfully created project on GitHub. And you can actually click that and it will open that repository. This is really nice. So this is how a repository looks like. That's my account, Polarize, and that's the repository. At the moment, we are in the code tab. I think I should maybe zoom in a bit. So we're in the code tab and the code tab shows us the name of the branch. If you have multiple branches, you'll be able to find them here. And it will show you who did the commit. It will show you what's in the commit. It'll show you the file. You can actually click on that and look at what that looks like. So this is exactly what we had before. And then um, you, can, um, you can add files and that's what we're going to do actually right now. Um, and you can get these links on dealing with the code. So if you want to, if you want to clone the repository, it will give you the URLs to use. Um, there's a tool, tool called Git, GitLab CLI, which provides a command line interface, which is what CLI stands for. Um, I haven't really played around with it. I installed it, but I haven't played around with it. But um, yeah, it would be good to play around with that if you have the time. So let's close this for now. At the moment, we have one commit. That's exactly the same hash as we had before. So if we come back here, that's the same hash. And the hash is the sort of like an indication of the uniqueness of that commit. So if anything changes, if even one character changes within the, the code, then it can detect um, whether from the hash, if the hash that will be produced from the code should exactly match this. And if, if there's a difference, it will say that then it will then track where those changes occurred. But in this video, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the details of how that works. I, I, I haven't even studied it, so I wouldn't even pretend um, that I can explain that. But that's what you need to know. The hash is usually just the uh, signature of uniqueness about this commit. Now we're going to add some files because it's useful to add three files one, we're going to add a readme. A readme is usually a short document that describes uh, what your project is about. It's usually in a format called Markdown. You could, there are different formats you could use. There is restructured text, there is Markdown. Um, I think by default, GitHub will use a Markdown and PyCharm has a very nice way of rendering uh, Markdown. Um, we are also going to create a license 
file because we want to make sure that our code has got instructions on use in case anyone else wants to use it. And we're also going to add a .gitigno file. You probably saw one when we did the initial commit. But we want it for our project and we want a specific .gitigno file for Python because there are certain extra files that Python will usually generate in the process of just running your code. And we don't want those files to end up in the repository. In a lot of cases, those files are hidden and they just tend to become very annoying. So the git ignore file allows you to define what should be ignored and make sure that your interaction with git will be very smooth. You don't have to think about those files anymore. So let's start with the license file. So I'm going to say create new file. Now, what you have to do is you have to type the word license. And once you do that, GitHub detects that that is what you're trying to do and it'll give you this option to choose a license template. You click on choose license template. Let me just zoom out a bit. Now it's going to show you that there are quite a number of licenses that are available by default. I usually like working with Apache license 2.0, but there are many others, the GNU, MIT, BSD, and so on. You could make your code public domain if you want. There's even the unlicensed, so I don't know what that is about. So we click on the Apache license. It's going to give you some instructions about what that is, what details about that uh, license. So what permissions does that license provide? What are the limitations? So for example, I, I think there are restrictions. In this case, we say that there are restrictions on, on trademark use. Ah, so you can use it for patents. I didn't know that you could do that. You could use it for private, um, private applications. And then the conditions, it tells you what the conditions are. If you have the time, you could read through the license um, uh, and there'll be a part that you'll need to edit. But we don't have time at the moment, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to click Review and Submit. Now, this is actually a text box, so what we're going to do is we have to make some changes here because at the moment, we don't have our copyright included. So here on line 189, you can see that it's it's blank so what we're going to do is we're going to just add um, the year 2021 and my name paul career so that's the copyright and right at the bottom we have this little section which is for committing a new file they have already pre-filled this for you because they know what you're trying to do there's no point of typing here what i would suggest is you should commit directly to the master so there's no point of creating an extra branch we don't want to go through the headache of that at the moment and we're going to say commit new file and once that's done, you're going to see that you have a license has been added, and now we have two commits. The next we're going to add is a dot git ignore. So we're going to type dot git ignore. Now it notices that I had done this before. And again, it's going to notice, it's going to provide some automation there for you. Um, and you're going to choose the git ignore that you want. And we're going to choose by language. We type Python, and it's going to feel that for you with Python git ignore. All these are things that you don't want. So they have specific things for Django, things for Flask, for PyBuilder, Jupyter Notebooks. It's just nice to have this. And again, we go to the bottom. It's already pre-filled what the title is and the, the description, um, who the committer is. And again, we are committed directly to the branch and we click commit new file. Again, so now there we have our third commit and then the last one is we're going to add the readme which is handily just at the bottom here and we click add readme as i said it's going to be in markdown so it has this extension md and it's just um it'll have the title and a short description now the hash that is there is not a comment that means that this is a header at the top level if you add something else if you add if you want something which is two levels below then you have to put um, two hashes and I think you can go all the way up to five or six hashes and I would say this is a subheading um, su um, some new section about this code okay and again we click commit directly it's going to commit that so we've added three files we have four commits okay and we have as you can see here it's rendered this really nicely you can do a lot of nice things with Markdown, but we are not going to go into that at the moment. Um, if you're on the tutored course, we're going to go into a lot of details on some of the things we can do 
as part of just the tutoring process. Okay, so now that we've done this, we have four commits here, but we only have one commit here. So we need to synchronize our repository on PyCharm. And this is where the update project comes in handy. So when we click that button, it's going to tell us update button, update project. Now there are two options here, merge incoming changes into the current branch or rebase the current branch on top of the incoming changes. Now, I like setting it rebase because rebase is more forgiving if you have changes that you have made that were not part of what was pushed. So for example, if I, if I was working and I made some changes and those changes, um, then I pushed and then I continued working and someone else pushed. So the state of the remote repository will be ahead because there'll be changes that someone else pushed. Now, if I simply pull and say merge, it's going to mess up my tree. And what I do is I rebase and what it will do, it's going to, it's going to pull and it's going to stick my changes on top of their changes so that our, our commit history is nice and linear. Then I can push those changes and those changes will then appear right at the top. So rebasing, um, rebasing is, is the, the best option here. Okay. Um, now there are some caveats. If you're, if it's a, as you'll see in the documentation, when you read this, if it's a publicly committed, publicly, um, it's a public repository doing that rebase, that messes up things for someone else. I mean, of course, they could then rebase as well, but you end up with multiple commits. You know, you'd end up with duplications. So this, there is some learning curve as far as using merge or rebase because you need to be working on separate branches. Um, in our case, since each of you will be working on your own, it's fine to use rebase. Um, so, so I'll click rebase and I'll say, okay. And it's going to pull and voila, I have the changes from the remote. So I have the readme here and I can make changes here and I can do whatever I want. Okay, so we've gone as far as, let's just have a look at where we are. So we've talked about, so we've actually gone all the way till the end. Uh, we've created a repository. But there's one more thing I'd like to like us to, to, to do. So we've, we've committed the initial repository but we've not made any new changes to the file. In other words, changes to a file that was already in the repository to see what actually happens. So let's do that here. Now I'm going to do that by, I'll just add another line here and I'll just say print um, another high from me, okay? At the moment, I'm not going to run this. Um, we're going to see how to do that. At the moment, our focus is just to make sure that we have, um, we, an, we have set up our PyCharm and Git and GitHub correctly. Notice the color has changed now. It's blue. That means there are changes to this file. For us to then commit these changes, so these changes have not yet been committed, so we are going to commit by clicking here, commit, that's what we clicked before. And again, we have a chance to enter a commit message and we'll say added. Um, so I usually like separating this into a, a heading and a description. So this is new print line, and I'm going to say at the bottom, um, added a new uh, printout that says something interesting. Okay, and then I'm going to commit. So once I commit, notice I've added that. So now the new print line appears there. Um, and now I need to push these changes and I'm going to click here, push. Now it's going to tell me, you're going to push from master to origin master. Now, origin is the name that's usually associated with your remote. That's the default. It'll just call it origin. But I think it assumes that that's where it originated from. But if it originated from your computer, then you're actually the origin. But that's a philosophical matter. We don't want to get into that. This is the commit that it's pushing. If you had more than one commit that we had made, they will all be listed here independently. And you could click through them and see what the changes are in those commits. And you could even reorganize your commits. But those are more advanced things. At the moment, we just want to push this and we click push. And it's going to show you that it's pushing. And then it's going to tell you pushed one commit to a region master. And then we can now come to, we can come here. And if we refresh this, we'll see now we have five commits and we have got our commit message. And you click on that, it will show you that in detail. So there's a little heading 
and there's a little description. And if we view the main.py file, then you'll see that our additional file is there. Okay, so I'm actually surprised. I've covered that quite fast. And we've gotten to the end of our presentation and that was actually much more straightforward than I thought. So that's gonna help you get started and ensuring that your PyCharm is ready, you have Git installed, you have got a GitHub account, and you have linked your PyCharm to your Git, uh, GitHub account, and now you're good to go. You can create repositories, you can push, you can pull, you can do everything that you need to do. Now, if you have any trouble doing this, please, if you are signed up for the class and you are on the Google Classroom, then um, you can, um, what you need to do is just write a message and let me know that you're having trouble. I'll post a link of this uh, video within the classroom, but again, it's available for anyone on the internet to view. Hopefully this is going to be helpful for you. And I'm looking forward to us getting started and, and making progress with Python. Um, that's it for me um, for this video. And I think our next time I'm going to meet you is going to be in the first class. So take care and I'll see you um, this coming Saturday. Bye.